Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. Today is Saturday the 9th, March 9th. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic Saturday. This has been a nutty week in the news. We are just excited about all of the great feedback that we've been getting for this week's shows. We have been having some wonderful feedback on the live episodes of the Energy Realities with David Blackman, Irina Slav, and Tammy Nemeth. We had a special guest, Robert Bryce. Uh, it has been unbelievably wildly successful. Those are from uh, around the world and live. Please and sit back and enjoy. And we're going to turn this over to the team and they're going to pick the best stories of this week. Have a great day. Uh, total energies or total energy, as I say in Tex Oak, upholds March restart date for Denmark's largest natural gas field. Uh, Michael, holy smokes. This is uh, EP Denmark, a subsidiary of the, the big uh, Total Energy. Um, this is a lot of gas that's coming back online. Um, the Tyra has been a center of processing for more than 90% of the natural gas produced in the Danish North Sea. Holy smokes. Wow. There was a crane that went into a... Uh, a process module. Listen to this 2.8 billion cubic meters of gas per year. Unbelievable. Um, that's a lot of, uh, and they call it the Danish underground consortium, which is duck, which is not what we consider a duck here in the U S um, and its operator 43.2%. And then the Blue Nord is 36.8 and Norsfaden at 20%. It's a pretty uh, incredible amount of natural gas that's needed for Europe. It is. And it, it, it also shows you the imbalance about what's going on here at home with our natural gas markets. I mean, you've got companies like Chesapeake, um, Southwest, yep. and they're shedding rigs like crazy. We'll see it in the rig counts numbers coming up here. Yet overseas with the spreads being so high you'll be a, you'll be able to get um these type of uh projects evaluated i mean it's great for norway they really need this and specifically what's going on i mean um in the north sea excuse me um this is going to account as you mentioned 80 percent or 90 percent was 80 or 90 percent of the natural gas that's coming through uh this facility is going to be from the tyra facility isn't that nuts <laughs> That's a big boy. I mean, when you look at the picture uh, of that thing, I wonder how many crew members that thing holds. It's a lot. It's a decent amount. So, no, uh, good for uh, uh, Total going back in there and, uh, and and bringing up that gas field. It's going to be needed. Trust me. It's only going to get worse. Hey, one last comment. We'll go to the next story here. Um, when uh, I think Total and uh, the other European uh, uh, big oil – we're going off the deep end, like beyond petroleum. Uh, now that they've come full circle. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yep, Let's, they're back on. Nat yeah. They're drilling for natural gas offshore. Wow, love it. Next one. This story is uh, very wild and huge. Canceled U.S. offshore wind farms back at a higher price. Remember when those other uh, st uh, they were all canceled uh, because they had no bidders. Mm -hmm. uh, recall leading developer Orsted were hit with 5.6 billion in impairments mm -hmm. for walking away from the multiple deals. Now they're signing new ones with prices that are almost double. That's why they walked away. I did not know that until after reading this mm -hmm. article. Then they have the, uh, there's a chart in here. And if you take a look, uh, Ms. Producer, if you could pull that in, the LCOE, the Levelized Cost of Energy Comparison. I found this very interesting. And the author brings out a fantastic point. Take a look in that center, Michael, where the wind offshore is absolutely out of line. Mm -hmm. 140 to 200 dollars uh yep. on uh technologies conventional general unbelievable i mean th they are 
here's where you and I have talked about the wind farms um, being fiscally unsound from day one. After eight years, they have to be redone. Guess what's happening, Michael? I've been talking to some wind folks mm -hmm. and some solar folks. And what's happening is in that a in that seven year mark, they start refiling for reworking these wind farms using the Porculus bill, the Inflation Reduction Act. They're double dipping only after eight years. Do you know how despicable that is for the consumers and the wasted products? And this is not good for the environment. And then uh, the reason that those first two were canceled, Michael, is because they would not approve a rate increase. <laughs> this is a Ponzi scheme. It is a shell game of, okay, I can take my subsidy here, move it into this category, make my accounting look good. I go snag my profit from this um, a new bill that got passed. And as you can see, these the, the, the cost of energy development, specifically for wind offshore, is being massively it reduced is 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 the chart that we just saw that 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 LOC or L LCOE chart wrong? No, it's just not factoring again the full life cycle. I thought it's you know really interesting. You know you've got nuclear at absolutely atrocious levels, one forty one to two twenty one, and you know that's stripping out a lot of the other costs, unfortunately associated with it. So not in my opinion, what this shows is that we need to figure out a way to bring nuclear down on this on on, on this chart so that we can actually roll this out at a lot better of a chance. But no, I mean these. These offshore wind projects, it's a nice sleight of hand they're doing, though. Hey, we're going to cancel this project and reinstate this one at a higher price. Well, and then there is uh, this is all about the lobbyists in, in Congress and who's paying them. So uh, mm -hmm. you wonder why John Kerry flies in private jets? <laughs> U.S. funding bill uh, blocks China from buying oil strategic petroleum reserve. This one is a bit different from the standpoint that a measure in the U.S. funding legislation, this is, a, I think it's in the same bill covering a different topic. Uh, the SBR sa uh, sales to China heated up. Remember in the 2022 midterm when he sold a bazillion barrels, he sold 180 million barrels to an all time low. Um, and then he sold 1 million barrels to Unipec America, a Houston based arm of China's Synoptic. Uh, oh, wasn't that the one Hunter was in? Uh, in night, uh, former President Donald Trump, some SBR oil was sold to Petro China International, a subsidiary of Chinese state oil Petro China. This is just unbelievable. Um, yeah, and it, it's unfortunately an issue for both sides of the aisle, clearly, with, with, with Biden and Trump both engaging in this. I mean, that for once. I don't think there's been any bill that a, that Senator Chris Murphy has put up that I've been a fan of, except for this one. I think it's disgusting because they're going to sell more, Michael. And what they're going to do, it's going to be the shell game. Oh, quick. For our podcast listeners, I'm moving shell game around, and they're going to have another corporate entity that the, that politicians are going to get money off of. And I think this is despicable. How do we replenish the strategic oil reserve? Well, no, I'm with you. You have to replenish it. But if we're at least going to sell, I'd rather not be selling to China. But you're right. There will always be ways to get around this. And, and, and this is more of a symbolic gesture than anything. But at some point, at least I'll take the symbolic gesture. But I'm right. If there's not true hardline making sure none of this flows to China, it, it really is just nothing more than a vanity play. No, this is not even a vanity play. They walk by the mirror and just kind of and then kept going. This is not you know, two ways to play Europe's $800 billion energy crisis. This is kind of wild, Michael. You know, the sanctions that pushed Russia's invasion of Europe, uh, uh, Ukraine 
hundreds of billions of dollars on those sanctions have cost the consumers. Germany earmarked 16 billion for the construction of four natural gas power plants uh, to complement the renewable energy expansion. And Austria has made its largest natural gas in four decades. Yesterday, you and I talked about the UK and uh, or excuse me, Denmark and their gigantic Ellen, uh, natural gas coming in off of the uh, North Sea. So uh, Europe has to come to shape with the global changing natural gas and LNG markets. Um, total Energies uh, is actually a hoot. They were the ones that we talked about yesterday yep. as well. You have MCF Energy. Uh, the small cap is backed by Ford Nicholson, is convinced that this is the right atmosphere to boost it. Uh, we have several others in here. Ten more companies looking to capitalize on the energy bull market. Uh, Halliburton, Schlumberger, Enbridge, Goler LNG, uh, Transocean, and Imperial Oil, uh, Pemba, Pipeline, Arc Resources, uh, Tor Tourmaline, and Precision Drilling. That's a who's who in the oil space, oil and gas space, isn't it? No, it it, it really is. Um, you know, I'm probably going to put my money on uh, um, MCF Energy mainly because you know they're an actual producer, and if those prices, if 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 we look, and there isn't the U.S. LNG as available on the market, they they could continue um to rise, but I'm going to tend to avoid probably some natural gas plays. I mean, it it it's never a bad idea to hit Enbridge when you're talking about um, oh, yeah. um 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 we, we will always need midstream. Now, do I like the master limited partnership setup? Mm, not so much. You no. know, I think you know not not sure if I want to invest in trans. It's an interesting list, but uh, I'm not sure if any one of them are going to necessarily catch my trans ocean i would not touch with a stick we don't give in uh investment advice but i do like goler um, yeah <laughs> aws acquires talons nuclear data center campus in pennsylvania i like this uh amazon web services uh is going out and they're looking at let me get you the quote we are pleased today to get, have sold our Cumulus Data Center campus, unlocking significant value for Talon, said Talon President and CEO Mac McFarland. This transition provides an, an attractive return on Talon's investment and vision in building Cumulus and creates value through the sale of the carbon-free power from our top um, Saskatchewan nuclear power plant. Pretty cool. Um, data centers with AI are going to be comprising a lot of power. And so they, this one was commissioned in 1983 for the energy company PPL. And it was uh, 2,494 megawatts. Um, and so when you sit back and take a look, I think the only team, uh, the only thing that is going to be able to help the AI or the massive amounts of servers that are going to be needed is nuclear. Let's sit back and take a look. Um, electrical vehicles. Oh, on a side note on that, had a great talk today with uh, Doomberg and Chris Wright. And they had some fantastic points uh, about that. So stay tuned for this uh, podcast being released, hopefully in about the next week. World hit by internet outages. Um, I don't know about you, but um, David Blackman, Ray Trevino, and I talked about the uh, uh, Charles Schwab up there when he was saying, hey, we are going to, you are going to see an internet failure around the world like you wouldn't believe. Well, we just had AT&T cell phone come down. We just had, uh, yesterday was, uh, uh, I'm filming this on Wednesday, but on Super Tuesday, uh, we had the, uh, I believe it was Twitter 
uh, no, Twitter stayed up, uh, uh, Facebook and several others, uh, all went down today when I'm filming this on Wednesday, uh, LinkedIn went down. So when you sit back and take a look, this article really is just displaying, uh, there are some big things happening on right now in the world of security. The Yemen Bay uh, Hooties, and as Michael and I say, Hooties and the Blowfish um, um, militants uh, could have cut the underwater cables in the Red Sea, uh, they've claimed. Um, in a post on X, Meta spokesperson Andy Stone said the company was aware people are having trouble accessing our services. In a subsequent mention, he uh, puts the disruptions down to a technical issue. I love that technical issue and leave it to Elon when he jumped out there and, and said, hey, X is still up. I loved it because he jumped out again today and said, hey, X is still up and uh, even linked, uh, LinkedIn got hit. Now, the uh, according to the company's uh, estimates, 25% of its internet HGC communications was hit. Uh, it had a contingency plan uh, through mainland China and the U.S. This was out of the cable that was cut. Um, and there are other telecom uh, folks that are also having problems. This goes back also to several other conversations that we've had is that there are things going on geopolitically around the world that have been emboldened because nothing was done even after the Nord Stream uh, pipelines were uh, sabotaged. There are other sabotages going on. We are in a area where you need to double check everything, keep your head on a swivel, back up all your data and um, just be careful out there. Things are getting weird and they're getting, it's election year. <laughs>